In the next 10 minutes, you're going to learn 12 different tools and techniques that can be pretty much used to design any logo. So here's the logo we'll be creating, which may look familiar, along with these 12 tools and techniques that can be combined together to create all sorts of logo designs in Adobe Illustrator. So first up, the ellipse tool. Rightio, so as with any good logo, we need to start by creating a new document. And I'm working with a 1920 by 1080 pixel artboard with a color mode set to RGB. The resolution is also 72 PPI. Now that's done, let's click create. Now from the toolbar on the left, we can select the ellipse tool and then click anywhere on the artboard and create an ellipse that's 300 by 300. And from the bottom of the toolbar, let's set the fill to none and then thicken up that stroke. And if you're new to Illustrator, a stroke is basically an outline or a border. There we go, suitably thick. Next, let's do this again. And this time we're going to set the size as 360 by 360, so a little bit bigger. Now let's select both shapes and align these to the bottom edge. Now I'm going to select the shape on the right and move this to the left holding shift so it stays perfectly horizontal. Just enough that it overlaps like this. Now using the zoom tool, I'm going to zoom in nice and close and then switch over to outline mode, which is command or control Y. And now we're going to move on to the line segment tool. And this does exactly what you'd think, it draws lines and we can select it, click and drag to draw a line in any direction, or we can hold shift and snap this to a 45 degree angle. Now let's zoom in nice and close for this next step. I'm going to try and line up the line we've just created with the top right edge of the left circle. And once you think you've got it, hold shift and press up once to move the line upwards. And now that's done, we can move on to the scissor tool. So let's go and select this from the toolbar. You can find this by clicking and holding on the eraser and it's under there. And I'm going to make a cut on the circle that lines up with the line. And that's literally it for this tool and you'll see why in a moment. Next, we're going to use the direct selection tool. And this one's right up there at the top of the toolbar and we can use this to select individual anchor points or click in between two anchor points and press delete to remove. And if you find a stray anchor point like this, just select it and press delete again. Now we've removed that segment, let's line up the line again. Jesus, terminology is confusing. But that's exactly what we're doing. We're lining up these two endpoints, which nicely leads us into joining paths. So with the direct selection tool, let's drag over those two end anchor points, go to object, path and select join. And now these are joined, the circle and the line that we created are now one shape. Again, let's press command or control Y to switch back to preview mode. Now I'm going to select the bigger circle and hold shift and use the right arrow key just to nudge this to the right. Again, let's grab the scissor tool and make a cut where the two paths overlap. And now the cut's been made, I can hold shift and use the left arrow key to nudge it back. Again, we're going to use the direct selection tool to delete the excess and I can freely move this anchor point around or I could hold shift to keep it snapped to that 45 degree angle. Okay, that's all looking good. Now with the main selection tool and the shape selected, we can go over to the stroke properties and set the cap type to round. And this will round off the endpoints of any paths. Now you can see here, I'm using the direct selection tool to adjust the length again, or you can use the arrow keys to adjust the position of an anchor point. So whichever method works best for you. Okay, once again, we're going to switch into outline mode and select the line segment tool. And we're basically going to do the same thing again, but for the other circle. So let's zoom in nice and close line up the line. Once we've got it lined up roughly, let's hold shift and nudge it out with the arrow keys. Go and grab the scissor tool. You can nudge it back into position briefly if you're not sure where to make the cut. Once you've got a good idea, go and make a cut on the circle and then use the direct selection tool to delete the excess. And remember to check for any stray anchor points as well, because if you don't remove these now, they may cause you problems later in the process. Okay, all looking good. Let's zoom in nice and close, line these up as best we can. And then using the direct selection tool, drag over both of the objects and join them together. And the shortcut for this is command or control J. Now, before we move on to the next tool, this video is sponsored by one of my favorite platforms, Invato Elements. Basically, it's Netflix for designers with millions of creative assets, all commercially licensable. Licensable? Is that a word? Yes, it is a word. And you get unlimited downloads. Need a cool font for a logo? Yep. Need an entire icon set? Sure, why not? Need some epic music whilst pouring a beautiful Irish whiskey? Literally, whatever you need, whether it's photos, illustrations, stock video, motion graphics, fonts, brushes, or even 3D, it's all there for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. And like I said, it's one of my favorite platforms. Like what you get for your money is just insane. And there's even a link below if you'd like to grab a free seven day trial and just try it out for yourself. Okay, next let's look at the Shape Builder tool. 
So first, let's drag over everything to select it. And the Shape Builder tool can be found under the Live Paint tool if you don't see it here. And if you hold down Alt or Option and hover over different parts of your shape, they will become highlighted and you can click to remove. Now I'm going to use all of the tools we've covered so far to just make a few minor adjustments. There we go, you can see it starting to come together. Next, let's select this and move this over to the left hand side. Go to edit, copy, and then edit and paste in place. And then using the arrow keys, I can move this copy out to the right, copy and paste in place, and then move this one out to the right as well. Next, we're going to look at expanding. So if we drag over the middle shape, we can then go to object and down to expand. Leave fill and stroke selected and click OK. This basically converts the stroke to a regular shape with a fill, and we can select the stroke and then give this a color. And it doesn't matter what color you pick, but for now I'm gonna go with a nice rich blue. Then let's go and increase the stroke weight. I think I'll go for something maybe around 20. But actually one thing we need to do first is make sure the stroke is aligned to the outside edge. And you can see this changes things slightly. So let's go and tweak that stroke again. I think I'll go for around 23. And if I then switch back into outline mode and select the shape on the far right, go to object and expand. And if you look closely, you can see how the process of expanding changes the geometry of a shape. Right, next up, we're going to use the Pathfinder tools. Now you can see the selected design has a few pieces that overlap and I can use this top left option to unite these separate pieces into a single shape. Next, we're going to select the eyedropper tool. Now this is located in the toolbar, but you can also press the shortcut I to access this tool and we can use this to copy properties from one shape to another. Now that's done, I'm going to select the shape on the far right and swap the fill and the stroke. I'm then going to double click the fill color and select white all the way in the top left corner. Now let's switch back into outline mode and if I select the middle shape, go to object and expand appearance, you can see the geometry changes and becomes much more complex. Once again, we're going to select the shape builder tool and one of the main uses of this tool is that you can click and drag through individual shapes and combine them together into a single shape. Or you can hold alt or option to remove from the shape, which is exactly what I'm doing here. Now if I drag over one of these, you can see they're both grouped together. But if I use the direct selection tool, I can select only one, go to edit, and down to not copy, cut. And this does copy it, but it also removes it at the same time. We can then paste it back in place. And with the main selection tool, drag over all of the pieces and use the Pathfinder's Unite option to combine them into a single shape. Do this for both pieces. And this is why we had another duplicate of the logo design. It was literally to create these two pieces. Now let's expand the appearance of the shape on the far right, and then use the direct selection tool to select that inner white space and press delete or backspace to remove. Now let's select these two seemingly random pieces and from the color picker, make them black. That's all the way in the bottom left corner and then hold shift and use the right arrow key to nudge these into position and then go up to object, arrange and bring to front. And now you can see exactly what these pieces were used for. Now we can select the version on the left. This was a backup in case things went terribly wrong. And now I'm going to move the super final version back into the center. Now, if I switch back into outline mode, once again, we do have a very complicated shape and I'm going to use the shape builder tool to drag through all of these individual pieces and unite them together into a single shape. And remember, if you want to do the opposite and subtract or knock out from the selection, just hold alt or option when using the shape builder tool. Now, sometimes it'll do this and remove the color. Don't worry, your shape is still there. Just reselect it and then reapply the desired color. And considering this is based on the Creative Cloud logo, let's go with a red. And now I'm going to select both of these pieces on the inside and set the fill color to white. Nice. Okay, next we're going to take a look at compound paths. Okay, so we have these two inside shapes. They are both filled with white. However, we want to knock these out and make them transparent. So with them both selected, go to object, compound path and select make. Illustrator will now treat these as a single shape. And with everything selected, we can use minus front in the pathfinder panel to knock the top shape out of the bottom shape, essentially knocking the white out of the red. And we can check that it's worked by just creating a random shape giving it a random color and then sending it to the back. And if you can see random shape behind, just like this, you know that it's worked correctly. And we're done with that now, so let's delete said shape. Next, rulers and guides. Pretty much essential for lining anything up, which is what we're going to do now. 
So let's go to the rulers menu and show rulers. Now my shape is a bit wonky at the moment. So if I drag down from that top ruler, I can create a guide. As you can see, it's on the wonk. So if I just rotate this from one of the corners, I can try and line this up. So my entire shape is perfectly horizontal, matching the guide. And lastly, everyone's favorite, but not really, the pen tool. So this is located towards the top of the toolbar and you can use this to draw custom shapes. Now in this example, I'm going to zoom in on the bottom of the logo. I can then use the pen tool together with Illustrator's smart guides to draw a triangle to flatten the bottom edge of the logo. And as before, you could select everything and then unite this using the Pathfinder tools. However, I'm actually going to undo this because I like the logo without this flattened edge. But there we go, there's a look at the pen tool regardless. And when using the shape builder tool, you may get these stray anchor points left over. And this is just something that happens so it's always worth zooming in nice and close and checking your final design. Here for example you can see one path that belongs to the logo and alongside it if I zoom in very close you can see another stray path that's just randomly decided to stop by. So we can select this with the direct selection tool and remove it. Lastly if we zoom back out we can now get a good look at the final logo design. And there we go, my friends, we have reached the end of the video. Thank you to Envato Elements for sponsoring this one. If you'd like more logo design, I've got another video right here, or we've got YouTube's pick over here. As always, though, you've been absolutely fantastic. Take care, and I'll see you next time.